Hi everyone, it's Agnes and I want to say hello to Marvin. Marvin's back again. <laughs> Great to be back again as always. <laughs> hello Marvin, hello Marvin. So you and I were just talking a bit behind the scenes about the importance of having a well-rounded and fulfilling life and once we do that 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 in its own self is what enriches our relationship and and that could be you know whether you're with somebody or whether you want to be with somebody and i know that looking back at my past when i've had relationships and i've revolved myself around someone else too much eventually they kind of lose respect or they lost respect for me yes. because I made them too important. So that whole thing about really developing your own life, not just skimming <clears> on <throat> the service so you can get back to the relationship, but really getting into your life so that you are fulfilled as a person. And then that fulfilled person then goes to meet the relationship with that on board because Absolutely. Yeah. So what do you think about, what are your thoughts? Oh man. Um, I of course, 1000% agree um, with everything you said. Uh, I feel like there's something about a person when they, when they walk in a room or when you talk to them, you can feel their confidence. You can uh, hear their confidence when they're speaking and, and all of the above. And I think um, what you said is right on because especially, um, especially with men, and I think this is this will be good for all of the women viewers, um, because men we we tend to, you know, be busy. We tend to, you know, I feel like men and women they look at things a little bit differently. Like um, men, a lot of times we look at you know physical features, stuff yeah. like that. Women they they you can describe a guy's appearance, but women are more so leaning on towards. Oh my God, what does he do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand he's tall, dark, and handsome, but what does he do? Mm. You know what I'm saying? And they're more so worried about, okay, what does he do? And guys are more so worried about looks. But I'm I'm saying all that to say that when you intertwine them and you look at, okay, if a man is successful, then that man is looking at you like, why are you always hounding me? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Why are you always hounding me? Because I'm successful. I'm over here doing X, Y, and Z. Yep. What are you over here doing? You're over here. You want me to do X, Y, and Z. You want me to take care of the house. You want me to pay the bills. You want me to do all this other stuff. But what are you doing over here? You're over here waiting for me to love you. Is that what you're doing? And I think a, a, lot, a lot of women doing that is what turns men off yep. from them. It's because men are thinking, okay, I have all of these responsibilities. You know, I'm, I'm paying the bills. I'm, you know, I'm bringing, making sure that I'm putting food on the table. Um, and all of the above. And then the women, they're like, that's good. I'm glad you're doing that. But it's not enough. Because yeah. after you've worked, you know, nine, 12 hours a day, I want you to come home. And I want you to just give me all of the love. Even yeah. though you're tired. Mm. Even though, you know, you probably don't feel like it. Even though you probably have more work to do when you get home. Because yeah. men are success driven. A lot of times, like, that's how they look at it. like, that's how like the collective consciousness in the world is that men are more success driven mm. like they 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 because it's been painted in the media you know men you're supposed to be the head of the household you're supposed to take care of everything you're supposed to pay the bills and that's the collective consciousness and i yep. think that's why it is the way it is is because of the collective consciousness that yo you're supposed to be a protector a provider all of the above and then the women see that and then the women at the same time they're like yeah and i want you to love me as well but it's so hard because I feel like a lot of times people don't actually know the kind of pressure that's on a man to, to provide for his family, for, for his wife or girlfriend or whatever. Yeah. And at the same time provide for everything else. Because as a man, you, you kind of want to take that on and say, I want to be the provider for everybody. Yeah. I want to take, take care of my parents. I want to take care of my aunts and uncles. You know what I mean? I want to take care. And I got to take care of my girlfriend or my specific person or my wife. And I got to take yeah. care of you know, and I think that that's something that a lot of, of, of women may not understand or, mm. you know, I don't want to say anything controversial, 
Um, but I'm just trying to like explain like the collective consciousness in the world and, and what you were saying to open open the interview is in, in, in regards to um, having your world wrapped around that one person because that that man most likely is is working you know as hard as he can or trying to figure out what he has to do meanwhile you're over here you know just waiting for him to you know without you handling your own stuff taking care of yeah. your own responsibilities and setting up your own life and having your own friends and and I just yeah. think that that's not healthy yep and when you're in relationship, when someone's hanging around waiting for you and they just sort of do their stuff. And then as soon as you're there, they're back on you. They kind of tend to lose respect for you because you don't have, you're not making yourself a priority. You're not going, you know what? I need to go and uh, do my exercise. I'll be back in a few hours. See you later. And you leave the guy alone. Or if you're in a, in a gay relationship, you know, the same things apply. Exactly. So, it is very much about the people that are attractive in their energy are the people that make their lives a priority. And you and I were talking behind the scenes before we started recording that so many people that are fixated with a relationship and a, and a manifesting a person in itself, having someone as your object of desire is okay. But when you lose yourself and make that the bright, shiny object of your entire life, that's when people lose respect for you. That's when people go, oh, I don't want to be around you as much because your energy of putting them on the pedestal, putting them in first position above your own mm. self, I don't think people want you to put them above your own self unless right. you're dating a narcissist. But right. for, <laughs> for the other people, regular folk... <laughs> It's like you, you are so attractive in your own, it's like you say you have this presence when you have your own life, mm. when you're not trying to get anything, when you're just mm. there to enjoy a moment, mm. when you're not so hell bent on uh, uh, shaping this person to meet your needs, when Absolutely. you can really see them for who they are, that they're an individual person, that they are someone who has their own loves and things. And how can you make something easier for them? Let, not, let me, when he walks in the door, not be hanging around going, oh, is he going to give me a kiss? Is he going to give me a hug? Is he going to ask me about my day, which is all about me, me, me. Let's right. see what I can give that person. Let me say to them, hey, I know you're tired. Get yourself sorted. I'm cooking you some dinner. And then you right. turn away, give them a kiss, and you go off and you make the meal or whatever it is, but that you get out of their face a bit so that they can decompress and yes. then they willingly come to you. Yes. When you've allowed that, I think it's attractive. Yes. That's, that's, that's uh, that was so beautiful. I mean, that's the whole, that's the whole hook. And I don't know if, if you've ever read it or if any of the viewers have ever read it, there's a book called men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. Yeah. And I, John Gray. Listen, I encourage everyone, <laughs> all of the viewers, if you have not read that book, read that book because it shows you the, I guess, dichotomy of, you know, the men between the women and, you know, women thinking one thing and men thinking another. Men are problem solvers, mm -hmm. you know, and women are, in the book he says, women are more so, they're always trying to create. They're always mm -hmm. trying to create. And that's why they create more arguments and create more of this and that. And that's why when, when women, a lot of times when you got, when we come home from a long day of work um, and you want our attention and we're, and, and you're, you want to talk to us and you're just telling us whatever happened, we men, we tend to like throw out um, solutions. Yeah. Realizing and understanding you don't want solutions as a woman. You just want us to shut the hell up and listen. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's, and that's all you really wanted. It, but us, like I said, us as men, like it's, it's, it's natural, he says, for us to mm. be problem solvers and give you a solution. And then miscommunication happens because we're trying to, you're trying to tell us, you just want us to listen. And we're sitting here trying to, uh, you know, tell you what to do, stop worrying about it, blah, blah, blah. And that's, it's not even that you want answers from us. You just want us to simply, yeah. you know, listen to what it is that you're saying. Mm. And, and, and also too, I want to say this with, I don't know if a, if a lot of women know this, but again, I think the collective consciousness about men is um, men. A lot of times what I've noticed is we don't, we don't want stuff that's easy. 
Um, if, if, if you're a woman and you are constantly, you know, coming after men, you know, trying to nag him, trying to get his attention, da, 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 like they don't like that. You know, yeah. men don't like that. Like, because we, a lot of times, like I said, this is the collective consciousness. I think what I've realized, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's the law. I'm not saying it's true. These are just my opinions, my thoughts. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of men, we, they like challenges, not all men, you know, but the collective consciousness is yeah. like, men are like challenges. And if you're a woman and you keep, and you come at a man and you're super easy, that man, and he sees that you don't have a life and all you, you do is, you know, wait for him and blah, blah. That man is like you said earlier on, yes, that man is not going to respect you. Yeah as much because he looks at it like oh you're way too easy you know what i'm saying yeah. and if you're this easy for me you will probably be easy for the guys in the past yeah. and you will probably be, be that easy for the next guy after me mm. so they kind of like and i want to say in terms of using the word easy we're not referring to sex we're we're referring to availability of always being around yes Mm. well said well yeah. said and that's and that's exactly what i was talking about that's it. yeah I'm glad, I'm glad you clarified yeah that. yeah that's exactly what i was talking about because when when that guy sees like okay she's too easy i don't i don't i don't want her i don't want to talk to her because she's just like now contrary to that if you show act like and show a man that you have no interest at all whatsoever that will drive him crazy and now again this is the collective consciousness from what i've seen you know what i'm saying and dealing with now again this is not everyone this is not you know yeah strictly from like from what i've seen people i've talked to the collective consciousness again that i've seen um and it's 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 crazy how it works but it's like it's i guess it's the old saying you always want what you can't have you know what i mean so if someone is constantly rejecting you you that just makes you want them even more mm. you know ah this person's ignoring me i just i just want them even more and i think that's the issue with a lot of sps is they're like oh i want this person to talk to me and, and like you always talk about on yes they can feel that you yeah. know and it's like they start playing with it. it's like they start having games with it it's like yeah uh, i know she i know she wants to you know wants me to text her so i'm not going to text her for the next like three days and then i'm going to wait and then I'm going yeah. to put up little stuff on social media and it turns into a game, you know, it, it turns does. into a sick game. Yeah. And that's why it's so important um, to have, like you said, to open the interviews, to have your own, your own life, you know, have to have your, your own, own, own side of whatever it is that you do. So you're not hung on mm. in that person. And I guarantee, I, mm. I feel like, well, I guess I shouldn't say guarantee, but I feel like in most times, you know what I mean? Like your SP will see like, oh man, you know, she has this going on or, he has this going on. Wow, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't care, he, or she doesn't care the way I feel like they used to. And then stuff starts happening. You know, it's, it's, no, it's, it's, it's crazy how like the law works opposites and, and stuff starts to attract. And it's just yeah. like when people get married, you know, it's, if for some reason it seems like when people get married, everyone starts coming at them. You know what I mean? And I don't know if it's because they see you're unavailable now. And so that makes people want you more. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's weird how it happens, but you literally have to take your focus off of it attention off of it and then like whatever you want it's it just it just will show up mm. yeah yeah it's so interesting because our yeah. our human instinct is to be more available and spend more time being available and it's actually the very opposite of getting on with your own self with your own life for your own mental emotionally and physical financial well-being right. that is what makes you platinum versus silver so wow. you yeah. gotta you know i remember i did a youtube about that um silver versus platinum but if you act like silver then you get and yet they look almost exactly the same on the outside silver right, and right. platinum right. but right it's the difference is one is more expensive because it's more rare right right and so it's the same with a person exactly. if you're more rare as in you're not being available and like you said about it being a game, you don't do it to play a game. You don't no, go, oh, not I'm going to not make myself available so that that person wants me more. You actually don't make yourself available because you're actually, you've turned and you're getting on with your life and you're developing and being someone who is not in that child state of, I need you to, so that I feel okay. You're actually getting on with your life and developing that part of you so you feel really good within your own skin and that in itself is the greatest reward it feels so good to no longer be dependent 
It does. It's such a great feeling. And, and then you can still want somebody, but from a more mature and adult place of, yes. you know what, I've got my life going, but I'd like to see you. Hey, let's catch up on Saturday. Sorry, I'm busy. Okay. Well, Sunday's fine. Okay. Let's do that. So you just roll with, you know, the, the flow of two people having their own lives. They come together. They have their own lives. They exactly. come together. Exactly. I mean, that is such a great relationship. It is such a great relationship. And if you can set that up within your own self while you're single, yeah, you, that's don't, like, you don't need to work on relationships if you can yeah, set that up. Yeah, that's that's over that's over half of the half of the battle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When when you have yourself and you do those types of things and you do the work on yourself and then from there you you know transfer that to to the next person. And I'll never yeah. forget when I heard when I heard Will say this. Um, the actor, American actor Will Smith, he, um, yeah. he said, it's, it's not my job, you know, to, you know, make my wife happy. It's not my wife's job to make me happy. It's our job to both be happy separately. Yeah. You know, and then we, we come together and then that happiness, you know, comes together and creates something magical, mm. whatever the case may be. And yeah. I just, I just feel like a lot of people, they just really don't understand and, and get that and, and understand, like, listen, if you have your own separate life your own separate everything yeah you will become that much more attractive to whoever it is that may mm. come down the line you know what i'm saying yeah um but it's like you said you gotta you gotta do the work on yourself you know yeah. you have to you have to you have to and stop trying to you know mm. get 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 mm. um and 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 just solemnly base your world around um you know this, this sp you know yeah. what i mean and and just move forward. You know what mm. I mean? Just learn to, and, and I guarantee like when people do that type of stuff, it's just, everything works out. Mm. You know, everything comes together. You know, you meet the right person at the right time. And, and like you said too, also, you got to be an adult about things because I think another problem that a lot of people have is they feel rejected when people cancel. Yeah. And they feel like, Oh, how could, how could they cancel on me this weekend? You know, considering how busy we are and like, how could they, and, and you got to understand, like, that rejection means absolutely nothing. But mm. people get in their own minds, you know, their own heads, and they start, you know, having, you know, fake conversations that, that probably won't even happen. And they start thinking things that probably won't even happen. And, and, they, and all because a person told you no, or because a person told you we have to reschedule. Like, that means absolutely nothing. But people yeah. blow it up to, for it to mean the world. And, and yeah. I think that's something that, you know, has to stop as well. Um, and just you know, focus on yourself. When you focus on yourself, you mm -hmm. know, men, men, women, it doesn't matter. Like whoever you're trying to get, whoever you, because at the end of the day, I think, um, I think it's human nature to kind of, um, in a sense, kind of want, you know, a little, have a little fun, little, you know, back and forth, if you will, or something yeah. like that. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not, you know, we, we like to, we like to earn stuff. You know what I mean? People like to, yeah. people like to earn stuff. Like it, when, when stuff comes easy, you don't really respect it a lot of times. And that, yeah. again, that's the collective consciousness. You know, mm. when people win money or people win this and, or people win this, or like, again, like I said earlier, if, if, if you're too easy to a guy or guys, if you're too easy to a, to a woman, you know what I mean? They might, they might not respect you as much because like, like, like I said, a lot of times people, they don't respect things that come to them easy. It's just like, Oh, that was too easy. I don't really care. Oh, yeah. I made that money. I don't really care. You know, I don't really need that money. I don't really need this. I don't really, you mm. know, and we tend to, it's to value things more that we, we earn or work, work mm. hard for. And, and I think that's the, that's the type of energy that you don't want to give off to people is that I'm easy, that I have nothing going on. You know, if you have nothing going on, how could you expect somebody that has a shit ton of stuff going on? That's, you know what I mean? That's up yeah. here in life or <laughs> in their career or something. If they have all this stuff going on up here, you're down here. You know what I'm saying? How could you even expect, like, look at that space between there. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, there's so much work that has to be done. So if that person's up there and you're down here, how can you expect them to come mm. down and meet you at your level and say, oh, no, you're supposed to do things my way? It, mm. it just doesn't make sense. Mm. Yeah. It's, um, it's such a great understanding of life and relationships that, the best way to have a good relationship is to really spend time developing your own self so that you can be the best person in a relationship. And if you don't have a relationship, 
so what? You're actually enjoying your life to have the best life that you can. The relationship is an extra, just like money is an extra. Having a house is an extra, having a great, amazing job, having great health. All these things are other things on the outside. I mean, health slightly different because it's within you, but it's like you benefit so much. And then that, if you take care of you really deeply, then you instantly have way less relationship issues. It is, it's like you got your eyeballs over here on them, but if you get your eyeballs back over here on you, them and the interactions with them, it just floats and falls nicely. There is no big issues. There's no drama. There's no, there's peace, there's playfulness, there's fun, there's enjoyment, there's sharing a good meal. You're not needing to. I think this is one of the greatest things about when you do get your own life sorted, not perfectly, but a lot better. You don't need to keep having relationship conversations. Right. You don't need to. You just enjoy them. They enjoy you. Obviously, if you want to get married, not get married, live together, not live together, you discuss those things. But you're not spending time discussing why didn't you call me back and I don't feel like I'm a priority and you're not having those kind of interactions anymore because you you attend to those things yourself so there's no need to put that on the other person and blame them so you're not having these fights being blocked someone ghosting you um you know drama you all of that totally it's like it evaporates from your life it does and then you can listen to smooth jazz in the morning and start the day. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> as you and I do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now, listen, ever since I've really grasped a lot of this stuff over the past few years, like I literally have um, no like zero issues. Like I literally wake up. I'm talking about like SP related because as yep. you know, I've been off of SP stuff. I'm just focused on you know yeah. how, to get, how to get this moolah you know what i mean how to get this money you know what I mean? that's what i've been focused on yeah and it's it's like like you said i wake up every morning and i'm just like oh you know what i mean like this just 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 feels so good you know what i mean and people and i want everybody to understand something i seen my sp back in september okay right and then you know when the next time i seen my sp again was recently it was probably um Maybe two weeks ago. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Maybe two weeks ago, something like that. So from September to a couple of weeks ago in January. Yeah. You know I mean, that was, the, that was the last time I seen my, my SP. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And most people would be like freaking out. They would be panicking like, oh my God, I haven't seen. Uh, but it's like you always say, Agnes, when you do the work on yourself, you really stop caring. Like you literally don't give a damn. Like, because you understand okay, this person over here has their own life, you know, and they're yeah. going through whatever they're going through. And I have my, my own life and I'm going mm. through, you know, whatever I'm going through. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you really, you really, when you do the work on yourself, you really fall back and you start to understand like, wow, like it's really not about that person. And you could not hear from your SP. You could not hear from anybody for any amount of time. Yeah. You don't let that get to you. You don't let that bother you. You know, it could be a best friend. It could be, um, family member you know what i mean it could like time doesn't matter anymore because you understand mm. you love yourself and you're like wow you know I, I may not have seen my sp for you know uh five months or you know six months or whatever the case may be um uh and but i don't care you know because um you're you understand and you're just living life and you're just like wow you're not focused on it anymore and i think yeah. like, like you said to open this interview like people just really have to get um, to, to a place where they um, are, have their own thing going on. You know, they're doing their own stuff. Mm. Um, they have their own friends. You know what I mean? They have their, you know, whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? But I just think collectively, um, we just had the, the whole world just has this, this, this microwave generation, you know, just give me, give me, give me now. Like I need it now. I can't wait. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. And it's the people that learn to relax, enjoy from morning till bedtime, 
They let go of preoccupation, let go of dissatisfaction, replace that with nice music, with doing some exercise, watching a movie, watching a series, yes. going to work, contributing. How can I serve in the workplace? And you do things to the best of your ability. You live a rich and satisfying life. Once you get that grounding, your relationship just slowly starts moving towards you with an effortless ease. There is no need. You just kind of, it's like two magnets that just eventually they just go. Yeah. Doink. <laughs> <laughs> Doink. <laughs> Doink. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I agree. And it, it's funny because it's funny because um, like I said, I have, I have, I didn't see my SP, um, but uh, I was always in like constant contact. Yeah. And, um, and um, it's funny because like, I, I had, I, this is something that like, I haven't really been, you know, well, I guess I have been thinking about it or it's attracted. It's, it's, you know, cause it, it's in my mind. So I guess I'm attracting it in a sense. But um, like, I remember uh, uh, a few weeks ago, like she came out of nowhere and it was just like, you know, Hey, you know, come stay with me, you know, come live with me. And I'm just like, you know, where did that come from? You know yeah. what I'm saying? But yeah. again, it's like we talked about, like, <laughs> like when you, when you, when you're not thinking about it, you're not worried about it. Like it just yeah. comes out of nowhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, wow. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So I think I say that to say, like, when you take your attention off of something and you really yeah. just focus on yourself and, and, you know, do whatever, it's like, mm. it, it just like the, the floodgates of heaven just, you know, open up. You know what yeah. I mean? And you just you just get what you want. You know, mm. but you gotta have your own. And I know a lot of people may struggle with this. That you know may have a job where um, they don't. You know, they like us where we work at home. Yeah. Where we have a lot of time to ourselves. Yeah. You know what I mean, we have a lot of time to think, and those negative thoughts, you know, start you know start creeping in. And um, somebody asked me that they were like, "How do you deal with that? You know, how do you deal with those um, you know negative thoughts when they start to creep up?" You yeah. Know what I mean? And I just felt like, you know, my answer, I think, was just basically just do the work. You know what I'm saying? Do the work on yourself. When you yeah. focus on yourself, you know, those negative thoughts and you change your own self-talk because the, 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 the doubts are really just your, your negative self-talk, you know, whatever habitually you yeah. over the however many years. You yeah. know what I mean? So just change, change your self-talk, you know, get yourself in a good mood. You know, take your focus off of that person, put your focus back on yourself and understand that mm. Lawrence Scoville always says, what's yours by divine right, um, it's it's yours. Like you can't lose it. You know yeah. what I mean? It's not, it's not going anywhere. And and I kind of feel and I kind of feel that way, like um, in a sense, like what's mine is mine. You know, that's why I don't worry about SP stuff because yeah. I'm like, what's mine is mine. You know what I mean? Like it's it, it can't go anywhere. By divine yeah. right, it's mine. And that <laughs> that that that, that just makes me have no worry about anything basically yeah because you, know, you can apply that 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 uh that affirmation to any area of your life you mm. know mine is mine you know there's i remember one time Anya, you told me um you told me there's uh there's no lack in divine mind and i thought wow like that was uh that was a really powerful affirmation that you said that was from florence too yeah it was from yeah florence. yeah and i remember you told me that one time off the record and I was just like, wow, you know, that's, uh, that's really powerful. And I started saying it and like, you know, there were things that were happening in my life and I felt like, okay, I took a loss, but then I didn't take a loss. And it, it happened because I started saying that affirmation. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like stuff started happening, stuff started coming back. And I was just like, wow. So yeah, um, that's another thing that I want people to, 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 you know, keep in mind. Yeah. Yeah. If you invest your time in yourself, whether it's like we talked about, you know, whether it's exercise to make the body feel good, whether it's investing in time, going shopping and cooking healthy food, yeah. whether it's um, exercise, whether it's doing a nice meditation to, to get to the point that, because I see so many people are running below 50% to below zero. You've got to have stuff in reserve, money, time, um, energy like if you're going below that point where you are totally smashed you know i went to the hairdresser today and this guy walked in he looked really grumpy and i was sitting there with my eyes closed doing my affirmations because i was just waiting for the the dye to set in so i'm sitting there and i heard the guy that cuts my hair say to this guy oh 
are you all right? You look really grumpy, right? And I was trying not to laugh because I thought that's really funny. He just said it to him, you know? And the guy goes, yeah, I'm grumpy because I'm really tired. <laughs> and I thought, okay. And I just, you know, I just laughed because I thought, I, rem I remember operating like that. Like right. when you're tired, your vibe goes down, your energy is low and everybody annoys the crap out of you. You just don't, cause you just don't want anybody in. So it's like when I saw that guy, I was just sitting there going, I remember being that person who was grumpy yeah. and hostile and, and never like always had that face, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I looked at him and I thought, wow, this is like a reminder of, you know? <laughs> yeah that's funny it's a reminder of where you can go if you don't invest right. your time in getting enough sleep <laughs> yeah exactly where you it's a reminder of where you can go back to where you came yeah. from that's yeah that's funny yeah so yeah i mean you do you got to invest your time you know everybody gets 24 hours what are you right. going to spend that time on and for me eight hours sleep is what i invest my time in because i must. feel yeah, I feel good on eight hours. I feel crap on about five or six. I feel really like that guy. <laughs> right. No, I agree. Like sleep is so big to me. Sleep is, is one of those Ooh. things. You know, and that's, and it's, it, it's been scientifically proven that sleep will increase, you know, depression. Sleep will increase anxiety. And I feel like a lot of these people with SP situations, I feel like they, they don't get enough sleep, you know? Yeah. Okay. And they got to have to understand like that that goes into a part of your depression that aids in it, that yeah. aids in the anxiety you have when you, you know, are thinking about an SP, you know, yeah. or an SP. all of that, all of that stuff adds up, you know what I mean? And I don't think a lot of people realize that, you know, just doing something like you said, get eight hours of sleep, you yeah. know, that, that can drastically change, you know, your anxiety levels, your depression levels, you know, when you think about an SP, mm. you know, all of that type of stuff. And the ability to think, not well the ability to not let the negative repetitive habitual thought patterns to sink in because if you're not tired you're able to get a grip quicker you're able to talk to, to flip it quicker because right. your mind's alert you got energy to do it but when you're tired you go oh there's the negative thoughts i can't do anything about it you know right and when you're tired everything feels like that you know so yeah sleep holy heck if you could change that one thing and get enough sleep that alone is going to impact how you move through the world and then how yes. you are able to deal with any issues that come up. I think it's, it's a massive and it's free. You can do it <laughs> as long as you want. Well, it's, you know, it depends on if you've got kids that wake you up, dogs that bark or a boss you have to get to work for, but you can right. still make it, you know, yeah, you can still improve that once you're aware of, of Most definitely. Yeah. It's prioritizing. You got to, people have to prioritize. You have to prioritize sleep. Yeah, yeah. That's for sure. I definitely don't think that, um, like, like people and I, and I get it. People are busy, but like to me, when people say that, that's just an excuse a lot of times, because when you prioritize something, there's no way that you won't get it done. You know yeah. I mean? when yeah. People, when you, when people say, Oh, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough sleep. I can't, I think that's BS. You have yeah. to, you have to look at your schedule, look at your life and figure out and say, yo, there's something I'm doing here wrong. There's yeah. something I could probably take out, you yeah. know what I mean? To where I can, you know, allow myself to yeah. you know, get X amount of hours of sleep. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's just like these people that, like I, like, I see some moms at the gym sometimes, you know, I used to see moms, they walk in with like, you know, three, four kids yeah. and they take them to daycare and then they go and work out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then I see people say, oh, I don't have time to work out. And I'm like, yo, listen, that's BS. I just mm -hmm. seen a lady bring her three kids in after work that I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? And she's in the gym working out, you know, yeah. so it's excuses is what they have. Yeah. You know I mean? It's excuse after excuse after excuse. But like we always talk about, you do the work on yourself, you get rid of the excuses. Yeah. <laughs> take out what's not working. You know what I mean? So you can add something that will work and getting, you know, eight hours of sleep or whatever it may be eating better because eating better, again is something that I've heard um, helps dramatic, uh, drastically with anxiety yeah depression you know I've, I've people that are that have mental health issues yeah just diet alone has helped people like that tremendously deal with um depression and anxiety and that's and Definitely. i don't think a lot of people understand these types of things and this is yeah. what you have to do collectively to try to you know mm. fight these feelings that you have about an sp or whatever the case may be yeah yeah you should start your own channel mom 
<laughs> Come on, what, remember I told you last time I said, ah, yes, don't gas me up. Don't gas me up. You, you gas me up right now. I'll hop, I'll hop on with you. you I'll be your guest. <laughs> yeah, listen, listen. See, I'm, the, my problem is I, I, uh, I think about stuff like that, but I don't start it. And I, I think, say, say to myself, how do I start it? And then I think, if I do start it, will I keep going? You know what I'm saying? Because I don't like half-assing stuff. And I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't want to let myself down, yeah. most importantly. And then I don't want to let the viewers down. So yeah. it's, something that, it's something that crossed my mind. But I'm just yeah. like, all right, how am I going to? How am I gonna navigate this? How am I gonna go about it? You know what I mean? So but I appreciate, I appreciate uh I appreciate the kind <laughs> word. Thank you for the gas. Thank you, thank you for the gas. I do think, yeah, it's important to think about okay, how if I'm gonna start this habit, you know? Yeah. Like I know my law of attraction friend and I, we do three questions. And we've been doing that for probably, oh, I'd say five years now. And we don't do it every single day because sometimes, you know, we're just trying to coordinate a time zone or, you know, I've got a client in the, that, that time in the morning when she's waking up in Australia or, or she's going to bed in Australia. So we do it as much as we can, but we aim for probably about four days a week where we're consistent. We've been consistent for a very long time. Mm. And then like for me, I was getting intense, um, pain in my shoulders because I was working on a computer and I thought, okay, you know, my partner said to me, you need to start doing weights to get the blood circulating and then the pain will go away. Mm. So I started that about two and a half years ago, like about five days a week. I do about 20 minutes worth of arm weights Awesome. and I've been consistent. So it's that thing of when you pick up a habit, can you incorporate it? and keep it going because when you keep it going, that's when you see the benefits and, and right. I can feel my arms are strong now. They're strong. They don't, I don't have flappy bits going on. <laughs> you know, the bits. flappy bits are gone. Um, just cause you get older doesn't mean you have to have flat little flappy, flappy flags. <laughs> yeah. No flappy bits. And then, you know, another one I've incorporated is doing a fresh juice every morning. I get up, I put on my smooth jazz and then I, I do, do that. fresh juice. I like, do that too. Yeah, it takes time. Yeah. But you go, hang on. I've got time. I'm going to make time. I'm going to make time. It's Because it's not just juicing. It's cleaning right. the damn juicer after. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because I, 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 I do the same thing every morning. I have a juicer. Yeah. And, uh, I make juice every morning. Yeah. Like you said, but like you said, you said something very important there. You said you make time. You make you know time. I mean? That's what you have. You make time. Yeah. Yeah. And you just do feel... Oh, when you do that, you know, and fit in, like I find I'll do a meditation in the morning before I get out of bed. And at the moment, the Oprah Winfrey Deepak ones are still on the, the 21 day okay. ones. So I do those or, okay. you know, when those aren't on, I'll do Ho'oponopono for about an hour. I'll lay in bed and just do Ho'oponopono in the silence or I'll put on, you know, someone's Ho'oponopono. And, and it's like, you go, okay. So it's like you, you have these things that you do that actually help you to really keep that peace mentally to go into your day. And, and then you do, you feel good about yourself when you've juiced, you've done your meditation, you've done your little weights, you've listened to your smooth jazz, you, <laughs> you know, like you just feel like, Oh, nice. You know? Yeah. yeah. Now what, Enjoyable. now what's gonna, now yeah. what's gonna happen next, you know? Cause that's, I feel, you know, what's crazy. I've, you know what I've been doing every morning for the past, I don't know, maybe, couple of weeks something like that yeah is, is with my smooth jazz I'll, I'll wake up and i'll just lay in bed and i will literally like say to myself i would say wow i wonder what great news i'm going to receive today uh under grace in perfect ways or i'll say something like i wonder um what beautiful surprises you know yeah. i'm going to receive today under grace in <laughs> perfect ways like again florence scovel shin yeah. um and uh, you know it's like every day something like wild happens like I remember um, uh, a couple of days ago, the guy at my gym, that's one of the salespeople, he came up to me, he, he sees me walking, he screams out of his office, he goes, yo. And I turn back and I walk down in the hall and he's like, yo man, and he's showing me on his phone. He had these, um, he had this, uh, this doll, this, uh, this, this, this Kobe Bryant, like uh, Los Angeles Lakers doll or something. He knew I was a Lakers fan, he knew I liked Kobe. And he's like, yo man, he's like, yo, I was looking and I thought about you, he's like, I was wondering if you wanted it. He's like, I wanted, and I was just thinking to myself, 
Like he didn't know this, obviously. But yeah. in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, this is from my affirmation. This is from my affirmation. I've yeah. been saying, you know what I mean? And I'm just thinking to myself, like, wow, like there's really surprises happening. And it's and I'm saying this every morning. I know, it's brilliant. It's <sighs> such a good socket to plug into rather than all that other disaster movies of some description. It, You're training your mind or directing your mind first thing in the morning. It's yeah. But it is, I mean, I do understand some people get up and go to a job. So it's, but you can still do, even if you do 15 minutes before you get up. Something's still, better than nothing. That's enough. You know, like yeah. I, when I had a job, I only did 15 minutes and that was like, okay, let me do affirmations in the shower. Let me prepare my healthy lunch. Let me get in the car and listen to uh, YouTube, you know? So even while you're on your way to work, you got little yeah. pockets of time to yeah. pick up the another little good habit rather than spending your time worrying or anxious or um worried or something about something you know it's it's directing it's the whole thing about all this stuff it's learning to direct the mind that's what this works about absolutely and and, and it works and and what to what you were saying just a, a little bit works like you don't have to do like an hour straight in the morning you know, you don't have to do two hours straight in the morning. You know, a little bit works. 15 minutes will work. 10 minutes will work. Like something yeah. is better than doing nothing. You know yep. what I mean? And however you can do it, you know, just, just fit it in. You know, don't, don't turn, because I, I stress this with people, don't turn it into a job. Yeah. Because you're going to hate it and yep. you're going to get mad at yourself. And then you're going to say, oh, this isn't working or, and it's yeah. like, no, it's not working. It's the, the energy that you're coming from, the space that you're coming from is the reason why. You yeah. feel that way. So don't turn it into a job. Mm. Like, like, just like you do a little bit is better than nothing. Yeah. You know, if it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, five minutes. Yeah. Um, if you don't feel like doing it, don't do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't tell yourself, Oh, I have to do this because yeah. you know, this is what Anya said and, and blah, blah, blah. Because, yeah. because that's, that's coming from a place of get, you know what I mean? And people still don't understand that. Like even when you do it and you're in that moment, that comes from get. Yeah. And that's not going to have a good benefit if you've imposed it whereas if you look at it as if i do this the benefits are wonderful i have a peaceful mind i start my day in a relaxed fashion exactly. i have a calm emotional state exactly. i can you know you're not preoccupied with the future or the past you're in the present moment making your juice or right. you know, <laughs> listening to jazz little ways. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly well there we go we have done a little Round the circle side salad of stuff. <laughs> hey, <laughs> no, listen, knowledge is knowledge, you know, whatever it is, however it yeah. comes off, doesn't, doesn't matter about age. You know, nope. we, can all, we can all learn something from a, a seven-year-old, yeah. you know, the same way we can learn something from somebody who's in their 70s or 80s or wisdom. Yeah. Age, age doesn't mean wisdom, you know what I mean? We can, learn a lot. we can learn a lot from everybody, no matter yeah. what your age is. So yeah. it is what it is. Enjoy sure. it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for coming on, Marvin. Uh, thank you. Always. It's, it's always a pleasure. Oh. I love doing these interviews and yeah. I love just talking Having, to the viewers. Yeah. I love, um, we always have a good conversation, nutting things out. I love working at the mechanics of behind the scenes of things because I think it helps when people are still struggling and they, you know, they you can just relate to you because they know you've been where they've been. And, and yeah. I think it's just, you know, doing a little bit, that's that thing. I will actually put the links below to Kaizen. Kaizen is about doing small, tiny changes over a long period of time. Uh, um, I'm not an instant fix, get everything quick and fast person. If you want that kind of stuff, right. don't come to my channel, go to somebody <laughs> else's. Buy more of sustained, laying good foundations and building a house, not out of straw, but out of brick. Exactly. So that's because what you will get here. <laughs> hey, listen, but you're right though, because most things that come fast, they usually don't last. You know what I mean? That's uh, yeah. I just rhymed. So yeah. you just affirmation. <laughs> I just realized, I was like, oh, that rhyme. You know, things that come fast usually don't last. You That's know it. So, That's a t-shirt for sure. Yeah. <laughs> slow and steady. Slow and steady. Slow viewers. and steady. Don't, slow don't and try steady. to, don't try to get the quick fix because nine times out of 10, you're not ready anyway. Yeah. So yeah. slow and steady. Yeah. Slow food instead of fast food. This is slow as well. Slow yeah. and steady. On yes's channel should be called Slow Soul Food. Or slow food for the soul. <laughs> slow, slow food, food for, for the, the soul. soul. 
Yeah. Lovely, Marvin. I like that. <laughs> well, stay on the line. We'll say bye in private. Bye, everybody. Anything we've talked about, I will link down below as per usual. And we'll see you, you know where and you know when, within a few days. <laughs> see you later. Bye, everybody. <laughs>